I've recently been reading a lot about the great artist M.C. Escher, and that led me here to an interesting puzzle. Like many people, I think that Escher's works that include impossible objects are pretty cool. There is the infinite staircase seen in the print called Ascending and Descending, and there is this impossible structure in the work Belvedere, which includes a boy holding an impossible object. And there is this one called the Waterfall. The water appears to flow away and even downhill from the houses, but ends in a waterfall which is above the scene. Some of these impossible artworks were inspired by correspondence with the mathematician and physicist Roger Penrose. As a grad student, Penrose had been to an exhibit of Escher's work, which included some impossible scenes, like this one called Relativity. Penrose left the exhibit wondering if he could make an impossible object himself. Together with his father, Penrose then published a short article in 1958 that detailed an impossible triangle and a staircase. They sent this article to Escher, and in 1960, Escher incorporated the ideas into Ascending and Descending with his take on the staircase. Escher and Penrose both inspired each other in turn, and you can see other links between the two in their work on tiling. That impossible triangle from Penrose's paper has come to be called a Penrose triangle, and it's a cool illusion. The triangle at first appears possible. It looks like a 2D representation of a 3D object, but if you look closer, you will see that this object could never actually exist in 3D. Some 3D models of it do exist, such as the sculpture in Perth, but it only works when viewed from a certain angle. From the side, you see it's just an illusion. Two ends are in reality separated by a distance, which can be hidden by the limitations of our vision. We only really see in 2D. Our vision is a bit like a still life painting. We don't see both the back and front of 3D objects at once, instead we stitch together a view of them from multiple angles, and our own experience also helps a lot to know what things are. The solution got me wondering though, would it be possible to create a four-dimensional equivalent of the impossible triangle? The way that we are tricked by a 2D drawing or an image of this triangle, could a 4D creature from a world with four spatial dimensions instead of three be tricked by a 3D model or image of a hypershape? The answer appears to be yes. In fact, here is a model that I made of just such a thing. This model is based on instructions I found in a 1978 article written by Scott Kim, who is famous for his puzzles and ambigrams, which are words that can be read in more than one way, such as forwards and backwards. Kim's 1978 article is titled An Impossible Four-Dimensional Illusion, and it appeared in the book Hypergraphics. I'm going to work through the creation of this 4D impossible object, largely following the method from Kim's paper. The impossible triangle is an optical illusion that works because of the ambiguity of drawing 3D objects on 2D paper. One way to draw a cube on paper is to draw a square, then shift it and join up the edges. When done so that the internal angles are 60 degrees, this is called an isometric projection. Iso means same, and metric means measure. All the angles and sides look symmetrical, but drawing it like this means some of the shape is hidden. The front three square faces hide the back three square faces. We don't see the back face at all unless the cube is transparent. To draw a four-dimensional cube, start with a 3D cube, shift it, and then join up the edges. We now have a four-dimensional cube known as a tesseract. We would need four-dimensional eyes to see it properly, but in a world of three dimensions, we can build a model. This physical model is its isometric projection. It's like a 3D shadow, or a 3D drawing of it. It is a way to represent the shape in a lower dimensional space. All the angles and sides look symmetrical, but representing it like this means some of the shape is hidden. A tesseract has eight faces, each of which is a cube. 
On this model, you can see four of the front faces. The front four cubic faces hide the back four cubic faces. We don't see the back sides at all unless the cube is transparent. They extend into the fourth dimension. Reducing the tesseract even further to a drawing on 2D paper might help to see the similarities, but here even more of the shape is hidden. These images from Kim's article highlight the ambiguity of drawing 3D shapes on 2D paper. Is this corner poking in or out? Are we seeing the cube from the front or the back? Likewise, this representation of a tesseract is ambiguous. Is this corner poking in or out? Escher played with this kind of ambiguity in his work Concave and Convex, where the same stairs sometimes seem to be going up and down. The stairs are three-dimensional, but have been drawn on a 2D surface, and our brains need to decide which parts are hidden. Our experience plays a large role in vision, and our brains try to interpret an image like this using other cues, like the walls and people. On the isometric projection of a 3D cube, the central point represents both the front corner and the back corner of the cube. There appear to be triangular loops of edges, which are not actually present in the cube, and that's why the impossible triangle works. Take three lines on the cube, which are in reality separated by right angles. One starts at the front corner, goes along this front side, the next line traces up the receding side, the third perpendicular line goes straight down. When drawn like this, we can claim the third line connects at the front corner, making the impossible triangle. In reality, the third line lands at the back corner, separated by a distance, not visible at this angle. On the isometric projection of a 4D cube, we can tell a similar story. The central point represents both the front corner and the back corner of the tesseract. There appear to be four-sided loops of edges, which are not actually present in the tesseract. This time, four lines trace a path around the shape. In reality, they are separated by right angles. When drawn like this, we can claim the fourth line connects at the front corner, making the 4D impossible object. In reality, the fourth line lands at the back corner, separated by a distance not visible at this angle. Here is a model of those four lines. Each line segment looks a bit like an impossible triangle, but put together they make a structure that appears to start and end at the same point in 4D space in a way that shouldn't be possible. With four lines attached at equal angles, this is not actually a triangle, but a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape. This impossible object is an optical illusion for 4D creatures. It works because of the ambiguity of modeling 4D objects in 3D space. A 2D person wanting to build an impossible triangle for their 3D friends to look at might make a three-piece model that comes apart. As 3D beings, we can build this impossible object for our 4D friends to look at, which is a four-piece model that comes apart. This model is one of those loops that appears to exist inside of an isometric projection of a 4D cube. It appears to form a closed loop in 3D, when in fact the two ends are at different depths in 4D space. For the impossible triangle, the way the corners twist over each other is responsible for giving a look of three-dimensionality. This page from Kim's article shows the four kinds of corners possible for a square beam. The corner itself is a cube, but in this isometric projection it is drawn as a hexagon. This hexagon can be overlaid on each of the corner types. The sight of end caps tells us if the corner is turning towards or away from us. In the impossible triangle, the corners are all of this type here, where each corner moves farther away from the viewer. 
a 2D being making this model for their 3D friends will sometimes have to clip off little tips to give the impression that one beam goes in front of the other in the third dimension. If these triangular tips were all added to the corner hexagon, we would get a stellated hexagon. Here are the four kinds of corners possible for a 4D beam. If you sliced one of these beams, the cross-section is a cube. The corner is a hypercube, but in this isometric projection, it is modelled as a rhombic dodecahedron. This can be overlaid on each of the corner types. The sight of end caps tells us if the corner is turning towards or away from us. In our impossible 4D object, all corners are of this type here, bending away from the viewer. For us 3D beings making a model for our 4D friends, we will also have to clip off little tips to give the impression that one beam goes in front of the other in the fourth dimension. If these tetrahedral tips were all added to the corner shape, we would get a stellated rhombic dodecahedron, which is actually what is drawn at the top of Escher's waterfall. In his article, Kim mentioned that since vision is a perceptual problem, not a mathematical one, we can't know for sure if this is an interesting illusion without asking a 4D person. He says perhaps we could leave one out as bait to attract a 4D person. They may find it an irresistible problem, just like so many people in our world are drawn to illusions like the impossible triangle. The ideas in this video are difficult. I've had the benefit of playing with the models, and even then it's still very hard to visualize the illusion. But if you do wish to learn more about topics like this, I've written a whole book called A Guide to Making Friends in the Fourth Dimension. It is available at tibbies.com. In the book, I don't cover the impossible triangle specifically, but I do go through a more gentle introduction to dimensions, and I've included lots of examples that aim to help develop the intuition needed to think about higher dimensional shapes. I've found that practice helps the analogy between 3D and 4D become clearer. Escher believed that math can be creative and represented in art, I agree, so I have included 175 colour illustrations in the book. The whole book is very colourful and designed to be an enjoyable reading experience. Right now it is available for pre-order and only from tibbies.com. Pre-order numbers will determine how many books I print, so if you do want a physical copy, then pre-ordering is the way to go. As a pre-order bonus, you will get instant access to an audiobook version of Flatland, narrated by me, which I have edited to be a bit more modern in language and easier to follow. If you liked this video, then I really think that you will like my book. I've worked really hard on it, and so I'm really excited to share it with you. Thanks for watching, and thanks to my Patreon supporters. A special shout out to today's patron cat of the day, Cricket.